Maps are a critical part of many web and mobile solutions, and the rich set of functionality provided by Google Maps makes it an obvious choice in many situations. Today, we'll be building a Google Maps application using Vue 3 with the Composition API. We'll create an application that tells the distance between the current point of the user and the location they clicked on the map. By the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of how to use Google Maps with Vue 3 and how to interact with it using the Composition API. We'll learn about how to get the geolocation of the user, as well as render an interactive Google Map with Vue. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other tutorials. You can find a link to the full source code in the description below. To get started, we'll need to create a new Vue 3 project using the CLI. We'll select Vue 3 for our project since we'll be using the new Composition API. When it comes to using Google Maps in Vue, there is a component library available. However, it does not seem to be widely used. Instead, we'll build our application by working directly with the Google Maps JavaScript API. This approach may seem more complicated, but it's actually not and will provide a better understanding of the underlying Google Maps API. To install the API, we'll use Google Maps JS API Loader. This module dynamically imports the Google Map JavaScript API library and provides support for TypeScript. Lastly, I'm going to also install Bootstrap to make the UI look a little more polished, but you can use any framework you wish. Now that we have all our dependencies set up, we can get to building our application. I've cleared out all the components generated by the Vue CLI tool and imported the Bootstrap CSS classes into the main.js file. We'll start by writing the logic for getting the user's location. Since we're using the Composition API, we can write this as a composable function so we can reuse it throughout our components or even in future projects. This function will simply return a reactive ref that contains the latitude and longitude of the current user. To determine the user's location, we'll need to use the Geolocation API. We can add a simple check to make sure that the Geolocation API is supported before we try to access it. To keep the coordinates up to date, we can use the Geolocation Watch Position function, which will accept a callback that is called whenever the user's position changes. We'll assign the coordinates to the ref since we are interested in the latitude and longitude of the user. To handle the listener safely, we'll also need to clear the watcher when the component is unmounted. We'll call the geolocation function in our app.view file and make a computed property called current position that maps a latitude and longitude to lat and long to follow the conventions in Google Maps API. We can return these coordinates in our setup function and display them along with a title in the template. If we refresh the page, it will now prompt the user for access to the location, and if we accept, we'll be able to see the user's coordinates. We'll use these coordinates for calculating the distance and for centering our map view. Next, let's set up Google Maps in view. Before we can do anything, we'll need to get an API key to render the Google Maps to the web page. If we do a quick search, we can find this web page in the Google Docs, which shows a step-by-step -step guide for getting access to the API. First, we'll need to create a Google Cloud project. Next, we'll need to enable the Maps API library for the project. And finally, we can go to the credentials page and generate an API key. With our API key, we can now use Google Maps Loader we installed earlier to import Google Maps API. It requires we pass in our API key in the Google Maps Loader constructor, which returns an object that has a load method. We'll need to await the load function call inside an unmounted lifecycle hook, since once it resolves, Google Maps API is available. After this point, we'll be able to access the API through a global Google variable. But because the library was dynamically loaded, when you try to access the Google object, you'll get an error from ESLint saying the variable is not defined. We can simply disable this by adding ESLint disable no undefined to the top of our script. To initialize our map, we'll need to pass in an HTML div element as the first argument. We'll create an element ref and assign it in the HTML element. Since we're initializing the map in the onmounted hook, we know the element will be set by the time we get here. 
We'll also add some styling to the width and height of the component so it displays correctly in the browser. The next argument we'll pass in is the map options, which has a property for centering the map view. For this, we'll pass in the user's coordinates we previously accessed. We'll also pass in a zoom level, which is a value between 1 and 20. I found 7 to be a good level as it allows us to see any nearby cities. If we save this and load the web page again, you can see the map is centered to the location of the user and we're able to interact with it. Now, we'll want to capture the on map click event so we can find the distance between the user and the point they clicked. This point will be stored in the other pose ref, which if not set will default to null. We'll create a map ref as well and assign it to the map we created. The only reason we're making this a ref is that we'll need to watch it later when we draw the lines between the two points. We can add a click event and assign the lat and long values to our other pose reference. We'll assign this to a click listener variable so we can clean it up when the component is unmounted. We'll return this in our template and display the other position's value similar to how we did with the user's position. Since this value could be null, we'll add a vif before it and display a text saying that the user needs to click a point on the map. Now, if we click around on the map, we can see that it updates and sets this point value. For a visual cue, we'll draw a line on the map so the user can see the two points they're computing the distance between. We can do this with a watch function, which will watch for any changes in the map and position. If any of these values changes, We'll create a polyline object, which accepts a path, which will be our two points on the map and the map we'd like to render it on. We'll also want to make sure that we remove the old line and create a new one each time. The last part is to actually compute the distance between the two points. We can use the Haver sign formula to calculate the distance, but it requires a lot of math to fully understand exactly how it works. Once again, a link can be found in the description below for the full source code so you can copy and paste it. Unless you are really interested in learning more, you can take a look at the wiki which has an in-depth breakdown of how this function computes the distance. We'll wrap this function inside a computed property and pass in the two points. We'll only want to compute the value if the click point is set, otherwise we'll return zero. Lastly, we'll return this in our setup function and display it in the template. Now we are done. If you click anywhere on the map, it will draw a line between you and the point you clicked, as well as display the distance. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned about using View 3 with Google Maps. I also have a growing community over on Discord, so I recommend you go and check it out. Anyways, hope to see you in the next one.